In this tutorial, I will explain what a collinear antenna is and how to build one. The antennas built in this tutorial are intended for test and educational purpose and should be used indoors. The antennas are constructed in such a way so it can be easily disassembled and its parts can be reused in other antenna projects. The antennas are not properly constructed and the antenna performance can be improved by using better materials, parts or another way of construction. A collinear antenna is actually an array of dipole antennas stacked one above the other so that they are all in a straight line, i.e. collinear. On internet you can find several designs how to build a collinear antenna. Collinear antenna 1 design can be found at this location. Collinear antenna 2 design can be found at this location. I have built both antennas and will demonstrate how these antennas perform in this tutorial. Please note, I have made some modifications to both designs. Collinear antenna 1. The collinear antenna looks like this. It is a copper wire with three loops. This is what a loop looks like. And at the end, there is also a loop. The three loops must all be wound in the same direction. It can be either clockwise or anti-clockwise. But they must all be wound in the same direction. This is collinear antenna 1 design. Length A is a half lambda. Length B is 3 quarter lambda and length C is smaller than 3 quarter lambda. The outer diameter is 15 millimeters. This particular collinear antenna will resonate at 868 MHz, which means the wavelength is 345 millimeters. Length A will be 173 millimeters, length B will be 259 millimeters, and length C is 3 quarter lambda minus 4% of 3 quarter lambda is 249 millimeters. Here is a copper wire with insulator. You can use a Stanley knife to remove the insulator. This is the result. Use an old cloth to straighten it. The wire diameter is 1.8 millimeters. I have placed the marker at 173 millimeters. Here's the marker. Use a plier. And bend it 90 degrees. In my toolbox I found this ratchet nut. And the ratchet nut has a diameter of 13.8 mm. Hold it and bend the wire around the nut. Use the pipe branch like this. Bend this copper wire around this branch nut. This is the result. Here's a bend, I have to straighten it out. As you can see, the bend is removed. This wire should continue along this line. This is a plier I've used earlier. I'm now using a flatter plier. I'm holding my plier this way. Holding on this 
end of the loop and then I'm going to bend it at this point. The next length is 259 millimeters. I start measuring from the center of this wire. Unfortunately, due to recording problems, I am missing some shots. The missing shots are, I have placed a marker at 259 millimeters, and then I bent the wire at 90 degrees. I have bent the wire 90 degrees and I'm now checking the length. I start measuring from this point. And the length should be 259 millimeters. Now I'll create a loop at this end, just like before. Hold the pipe wrench like this and bend the wire in the same direction as before. The result is this. Again, straighten out the wire with an old cloth and again bend the wire 90 degrees. Hold the plier like this and then bend it 90 degrees. This wire should continue on the other side. Here's the loop on the one side and here's the other loop on the other side. I start measuring at the center of the wire where the loop begins and I set a marker at 249 millimeters. Bend the wire at 90 degrees and create a loop at this end. Again, hold your pipe wrench this way. Bend the wire the same direction as before. This is the result. I will cut it here. This is the result. Let's check the length. Start at this point. As you can see, the length is 249 millimeters. And this is the collinear antenna. As you can see, the loop in the diameter is 15.2 millimeters. According to the design, the outer diameter should be 15 millimeters. But my outer diameter is 15.2 plus 1.8 plus 1.8 is 18.8 millimeters. I will not change this. And here you can see that the copper wire diameter is 1.8 millimeters. Let's say you have a copper wire with a diameter of 1.8 millimeters and you want to create a loop with an inner diameter of 15 millimeters. If you use a cylinder with an outside diameter of 15 millimeters and you wrap a wire around this cylinder, you will not make a loop with an inside diameter of 15 millimeters. The copper wire expands a little bit. 
you need a cylinder with an auto diameter slightly smaller than 15 millimeters. You need to experiment with different cylinder sizes. This is the N-type female chassis mount 4-hole connector. These are terminal strip blocks. This terminal strip block is used for 3 amperes. I am using this one. These screws can tightly clamp these wires. It doesn't wiggle. These screws cannot tightly clamp these wires. Over time it loosens. Collinear antenna 1 uses these terminals. Collinear antenna 2 uses these smaller terminals. As you can see, I have rounded the corner. I have used this Dremel tool to round the corner. If I don't round the corner, the terminal strip lock will touch the metal, as you can see over here. As you can see, the terminal strip block is rounded and it will not touch this metal. Connect the collinear antenna. This is an N type mill to RP SMA mill adapter. Connect the adapter to the factor impedance analyzer using this converter. This is the SMA male to RP SMA female converter. SMA male, RP SMA female. The collinear antenna is attached to the Type N female chassis mount 4-hole connector. I've used the N1201 SA antenna analyzer to measure the antenna parameters. Unfortunately, the measured visoire, impedance and S11 antenna parameters are not great. The visoire is greater than 6. To lower the visoire, I made some modifications to the antenna design. I cut the antenna at two places, here and here. And I use two terminals to connect the antenna parts and to adjust the length, as you can see over here. By the way, if you use these smaller terminals, these wires does not fit inside. It is not recommended to cut your antenna and use terminals to tune your antenna. I have done this as an experiment. Using terminals will alter the antenna radiation pattern. Please do not do this. I have done this as an experiment. I have cut the collinear antenna here and I'm using a terminal to adjust the length. I'm using a terminal here and here. The lengths are adjusted and the antenna parameters are measured using the N1201SA antenna analyzer. The visoire is slightly improved. It is now 5, but it is still bad. In an attempt to lower the visoire, four stainless steel radials with a length of 90 mm each are attached to the Type N female chassis mount 4 hole connector. The radials are not bent. This is what it will look like in top view and bottom view. 
Here is the design. Each radial is connected to the connector using a terminal. As you can see, the radial is inside the terminal and is clamped by these screws. I use a drill and make this hole 4 mm in diameter. These screws have a diameter of 3.8 mm. And now they fit. I'm using a ring and a cut washer to attach the terminal strip lock to the connector. This is the ring and this is the cut washer. This is the ring and this is the cut washer. This is the result. If you have an old umbrella which is broken, don't throw it away. You can use these stainless steel ribs. These stainless steel ribs are from the umbrella. And this is a copper wire. And you can see copper wire can easily bend. But these stainless steel wires are very stiff and cannot easily bend. I will cut these wires to a length of 90 millimeters. This stainless steel wire has a diameter of 1.8 millimeters and you can use a wire cutter like this to cut this wire. I've marked 90 millimeters. and use a cloth. As you can see, it is 90 millimeters long. Make four pieces of these. Here are the four pieces. They are all 90 millimeters long. Now connect the rounded terminal to this connector. Make sure the screw does not touch these terminals. This is the collinear antenna. I have attached the collinear antenna to the connector. Here is an overview of all the modifications I made to the collinear antenna 1 design. I have added 4 radials and each radial has a length of 90 mm. Length A is now 175 mm. Length B is 259 mm. And length C is 249 mm. As you can see, only this length is changed. The spacing is 2.8 mm. The diameter of the radiator and radials are both 1.8 mm. The radiator is made of copper and the radials are made of stainless steel. The outer diameter of the loop is 18.8 mm. This is my collinear antenna 1 final design. To emphasize it again, it is not a good idea to cut your antenna and use terminals. I have done this as an experiment. 
connect the collinear antenna to the factor impedance analyzer. The collinear antenna is attached to the factor impedance analyzer. This is the impedance graph. This is the fist war. And this is the S11. The length of this part of the antenna is very sensitive. If you even change one millimeter, the antenna parameters will change. There is no need to cut the antenna here and here, because I thought these lengths were wrong. Based on the collinear antenna 1 final design, the phase war is 1.2, the impedance is approximately 44 ohms, and S11 is approximately minus 21 dB. These are very good results. This is the phase war plot, the S11 plot, and the impedance plot. I have modeled the collinear antenna 1 final design in the 4NEC2 program based on this model. And here are the radials. The antenna is positioned at a height of 11 meters, as you can see over here. This is how the collinear antenna is modeled in the 4NEC2 program. You can clearly see the three loops. Again, the loop in more detail. And here are the four radials. The 4NEC2 card deck can be found at this location. As you can see, the fist wire is 1.18. The antenna is positioned at a height of 11 meters above ground. In the 4NEC2 program, I'm using real ground and the ground type is city industrial area. This is the radiation pattern in vertical plane and the radiation pattern in the horizontal plane. As you can see, the maximum gain is 5.22 dBi at an elevation angle of 30 degrees. The maximum gain is here. The two plots were generated when the antenna is at a height of 11 meters above ground. At an angle of 5 degrees, this angle, the gain is 2.3 dBi. Again, this is the radiation pattern in the vertical plane and the corresponding radiation pattern in 3D. This cross section is the same as this plot. Again, the radiation pattern in 3D. The maximum gain is here. I've noticed that the coil diameter plays an important role. If the coil diameter is even one millimeter off, you will get different fissoirs. In the final design, when the outer diameter is 18.8 millimeters, the fissoir is 1.18. If the outer coil diameters are 19.8 millimeters, the fissoir will change to 2.23. And if the outer coil diameter is 17.8 millimeters, the fist wire will change to 1.93. There are several gateways in my area which are able to receive my sensor data. My end node is placed indoors at an altitude of 11 meters 
in front of a window. I made an overview of all the gateways which were able to receive my sensor data over the last year. My purpose is to calculate the elevation angles of these gateways compared to my end node location. My end node is located here at an altitude of 11 meters. D is the straight line distance between end node and the gateway. And the gateway is located at this height. I'm interested in this elevation angle. The elevation angle is calculated with this equation. The earth curvature can be neglected. The proof can be found in the next slide. Let's assume the largest distance, d, that is this distance, between end node and gateway is 100 kilometers. In most cases, you will never reach this distance. If d is 100 kilometers, to calculate the straight line L, you can use this equation. L is a straight line between two points on Earth in kilometers. D is the distance between end node and gateway in kilometers, that is this distance. And R is the Earth radius in kilometers, which is 6,371 kilometers. So if D is 100 kilometers, the straight line L is 99.9989 kilometers. This means distance L is almost the same as distance D. This is the proof that the Earth curvature can be neglected. Here's an overview of all the gateways which were able to receive my sensor data of the last year. This is the distance from end node to gateway. This is the gateway antenna altitude in meters. The antenna placement, which is not relevant at this point. And these are the calculated elevation angles between my end node and the gateway. This is the lowest elevation angle, minus 0 0.28 degrees. And this is the highest elevation angle, which is 2.12 degrees. Looking at the previous table, the gateway antennas in my area are placed at elevation angles between minus 1 degrees and plus 3 degrees based on my end node location. So why is the elevation angle so important? This is the radiation pattern in a vertical plane. Look at this red line. The gateways which are able to receive my transmitted data are all within this small elevation angle range. Minus 1 degrees to plus 3 degrees. Based on the vertical radiation pattern, collinear antenna 1 is not a good antenna because the highest gain is at this angle, but most of my gateways operates within this elevation angle range. At the angle of 5 degrees, the gain is 2.33 dBi, which is not great. The highest gain is 5.22 dBi. This is a vertical radiation pattern of collinear antenna 1, and this is the vertical radiation pattern of a half-wave dipole antenna from tutorial 41. Both antennas were positioned at a height of 11 meters above ground, using real ground, and the ground type is city industrial area. At a 5 degree angle, the gain is 2.33 dBi, and at the 5 degree angle, the gain is 6.23 dBi. As you can see, a half-wave dipole antenna should perform better than this collinear antenna 1 because most of my gateways operate within this angle. How well does my self-built collinear antenna 1 perform? To answer this question, two performance tests will be conducted. Performance test A. The collinear antenna 1 is attached to an end node, which is located inside a building, and transmits messages, which will be received by nearby gateways in my area. The average RSSI is calculated, and also the total time it took to receive 10 messages. The test will be repeated using a sleeve dipole antenna. Performance test B. The collinear antenna 1 is attached to an end node and transmit messages, which will be received by a dedicated gateway 6 meters away. 
both devices are indoors. The average RSSI is calculated and also the total time it took to receive 10 messages. The test will be repeated using a half-wave dipole antenna. Performance test A and B are simple tests and will give me a rough indication how well my antenna performs compared to the half-wave dipole antenna. Both tests are conducted indoors, which means the walls reflect the transmitted signals, thus influencing their measurements. Therefore, take the results with a grain of salt. A much better method to tell how your antenna actually performs in the real world, see this procedure. Here is the procedure for performance test A. The collinear antenna 1 performance is compared with a sleeve dipole antenna. More information about sleeve dipole antennas, see tutorial 43. For this test, I am using the EndNote and antenna C as demonstrated in tutorial 33. More information about this EndNote, see this link. The EndNote uses the MCCI LoRaWAN LMIC library. See this GitHub page. The EndNote uses the following sketch. See this link. Here you see collinear antenna 1 connected to the end node, and here is a sleeve dipole antenna connected to the end node. The end node is placed inside the building in front of a window. This is the building circumference. The end node is placed at location A, facing east and south, at an altitude of 11 meters. I have not modified the end node transmission power when using collinear antenna 1. In my area there are several gateways and I know that these gateways, which are connected to the thing's network, can receive my transmitted data. Collinear antenna 1 is attached to the end node at location A and transmits data. I have done the same with the sleeve dipole antenna. In both cases, two messages per minute were transmitted. The log data can be found at this location. One or more gateways were able to receive my transmitted sensor data. See this Google map. The end node transmission power is 14 dBm. This table is created with the help of this locked data. These are the gateways which were able to receive my transmitted sensor data. These are the distances between the end node and the gateways. These are the gateway antenna altitudes. These are the average RSSI values for the collinear antenna and the sleeve dipole antenna. And these are the elevation angles between the end node and the gateways. As you can see, there is no significant difference in the average RSSI values between the collinear antenna 1 and the sleeve dipole antenna. The time it took for the gateways to receive the 10 messages from the end node using the sleeve dipole antenna is 13 minutes and using the collinear antenna is 10 minutes. The Arduino sketch is configured to transmit one message per minute. In a perfect situation, it should take 10 to 11 minutes to receive these 10 messages. If you look at the radiation pattern in the vertical plane, you can clearly see that the collinear antenna 1 performs very good at certain elevation angles. At this elevation angle and this elevation angle. I have a question. If I slightly tilt the collinear antenna, can the antenna performance be improved? I'm focusing on this angle range. I have extended performance test A by tilting the collinear antenna at several angles. In this example, the collinear antenna is tilted minus 5 degrees. I have picked one gateway from the previous table. In this test, I have selected this gateway. I'm only interested in the results from this gateway. The log data can be found at this location. Two messages per minute were transmitted, and the end node transmission power is still 14 dBm. Here you can see which antenna I have used and the corresponding tilt angle. Again, I'm using a sleeve dipole as my reference antenna. As you can see, when I tilt the collinear antenna at minus 5 and minus 9 degrees, it will improve the average time 
to receive 15 messages. My conclusion is, by tilting the collinear antenna one, the antenna performance is improved. Please note, this only applies for this particular collinear antenna. Now let's discuss performance test B. Make sure you keep everything in your setup the same when switching from collinear antenna 1 to the half-wave dipole antenna. A slight change can impact your measurements. Do not change the height of the end node and the height of the gateway. Do not change the distance between end node and the gateway. Use the same end node and gateway. Use the same coax cables and connectors. During the measurements, I did not stay in the room. The distance between transmitter and receiver should be greater than 4 wavelengths. This is the far field region. More information about near and far field, see tutorial 34. Here is the test setup. The end node with collinear antenna 1. And here is the gateway using antenna C. The distance between the two antennas is 6 meters. In the foreground you see the collinear antenna and in the background the gateway. And in the reverse, here is the gateway in the foreground and in the background you see the collinear antenna 1. Here is the other setup. The end node with the half-wave dipole antenna. And again the same gateway using the same antenna C. The distance between the two antennas is 6 meters. In this picture you see the half-wave dipole antenna in the foreground and in the background the gateway. In the reverse the gateway in the foreground and in the background you see the half-wave dipole antenna. This is the half-wave dipole antenna used in the setup. This particular half-wave dipole antenna is already discussed in tutorial 41. This half-wave dipole antenna has these antenna parameters. The locked data can be found at this location. The average RSSI when using the half-wave dipole antenna is minus 26.8 dBm. And the average RSSI when using collinear antenna 1 is minus 29.5 dBm. The time it took for the gateway to receive the 15 messages from the end node using the half-wave dipole antenna is 15 minutes. Using the collinear antenna 1 is 16 minutes. The Arduino sketch is configured to transmit 2 messages per minute. In a perfect situation, it should take 7.5 to 8 minutes to transmit these 15 messages. Based on the results of performance test A and B, I conclude that the collinear antenna 1 performance is quite similar to the half-wave dipole antenna if I only look at the elevation angles between minus 1 and 3 degrees. This assumption is supported by comparing the 4 NEC2 radiation pattern in the vertical plane between the half-wave dipole antenna and the collinear antenna 1 at elevation angles between minus 1 degrees and 3 degrees. Collinear antenna 2 As mentioned in the beginning of this presentation, there are two collinear designs. Now let's try the other design, collinear antenna 2. You can find this collinear design at this GitHub page. Attention, I have made some modifications to this design. The 4NEC2 card deck can be found at this location. Collinear Antenna 2 also uses this Type N female chassis mount 4 hole connector. Collinear Antenna 2 also uses the same copper wire with a diameter of 1.8 mm. The electrical insulator can be easily removed using a Stanley knife. The copper wire can be stretched out. The stretch out wire will be stiffer, more straight and the wire diameter will decrease. But in this tutorial I have not stretched out the copper wire. I am using these smaller terminals. Each terminal has two screws. From two screws I have cut the screws in half. So they will not stick out too much, as you can see over here. This is already explained in tutorial 44. This terminal does not fit over this pin. That is why I have enlarged the hole of the terminal. This is also explained in tutorial 44. I'm using a metal washer. 
as you can see over here. The terminal screw head has a diameter of 3.5 mm, which is the same size as the type N connector hole diameter, which is also 3.5 mm. To prevent the screw falling through the hole, a metal washer is needed, as you can see here. Just like collinear antenna 1, I'm using the type N male to RP SMA male plug adapter coaxial cable connector. And this is the design the collinear antenna with four radials. The radials are bent, as you can see. Length A is 174 mm, length B is 221 mm, length C is 186 mm. The spacing is 4.5 mm. The radiator and radials have a diameter of 1.8 mm. The radiator is made of copper and the radials are made of stainless steel. The outer diameter of the loop is 29.6 mm, as you can see over here. Just like collinear antenna 1, collinear antenna 2 has also three loops. And the three loops must all be wound in the same direction. It can be either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Loop A, B, and C. A, B, and C. This is the dimension of a radial. This length is 10 mm, and this length is 65 mm. It is bent over an angle of 40 degrees. From here to here is LBX, and from here to here is LBY. These lengths are needed when you model the antenna in the 4NEC2 program. The radials are made of stainless steel from an old umbrella to make it less bendier. The type N connector with terminals and the four radials. This is a top view and this is the bottom view. The collinear antenna attached to the type N connector using a terminal. Make sure this screw does not touch the ground. The collinear antenna with the bottom loop. This distance starts from the center of the type N connector and where the radial starts to bend. To tune the collinear antenna, make sure this angle is 90 degrees and then you can increase or decrease this spacing. If this wire is bent this way or this way, it is difficult to tune the antenna, so make sure this angle is 90 degrees. By the way, in the antenna model, the spacing is 4.5 mm, but in reality, it is 5 mm. So the antenna model is 4.5 mm, but when tuning the antenna, the spacing is 5 mm. The center of the type N connector to the center of the loop. The distance is 13.9 mm, and this distance from the center of the type N connector to where the radial is bent is 28 mm. These dimensions are needed when you model the antenna in the 4NEC2 program. The collinear antenna 2 fully assembled. The collinear antenna 2 when attached to the antenna analyzer. To tune the antenna, make sure that this angle is 90 degrees. 90 degrees. The same applies for this loop. 90 degrees. And this loop. And 90 degrees. Here are the measured antenna parameters. The visual is approximately 1.6. The impedance is approximately 58 ohms. 
and S11 is approximately minus 13 dB. Here is the corresponding FISWAR plot, S11 plot, and impedance plot. This is how Collinear Antenna 2 is modeled in the 4NEC2 program. Please note this antenna is tuned for 868 MHz. The collinear antenna is made of copper and the radials are made of stainless steel. These are the symbols used in the 4NEC2 program. More symbols used in the 4NEC2 program. The height is set to 11 meters. Here are more details how the antenna is modeled in the 4NC2 program. And here are more details how the radials are modeled in the 4NC2 program. Here you can see how collinear antenna 2 is modeled in the 4NC2 program. The four radials in more detail. And here you can see how the loops are modeled. As you can see, the FISWAR is 1.84. The antenna is positioned 11 meters above ground. In the model, real ground is used and the ground type is city industrial area. Here is the radiation pattern in the vertical plane and the radiation pattern in the horizontal plane. As you can see, the maximum gain is 7.7 .7 dBi at an elevation angle of 85 degrees. That is this point. Again, the radiation pattern in vertical plane and the corresponding radiation pattern in 3D. Again, the radiation pattern in 3D and you can clearly see the maximum gain is located in this area. Again, the maximum gain is 7.7 .7 dBi at an elevation angle of 85 degrees, that is this point. Please note, most of my gateways are located between minus 1 and 3 degrees in this elevation range. Both plots are the radiation pattern in vertical plane, but this plot belongs to collinear antenna 1 and this plot belongs to collinear antenna 2. In this plot, the gain is 2.33 dBi at this angle, and in this plot, the gain is 7.7 .7 dBi at the same angle. And most of my gateways operate within this angle range. As mentioned earlier, the collinear antenna 2 for NEC card deck can be found at this location. Real ground is used and the ground type is set to city industrial area. And here you can see the different maximum gains at different altitudes. You can clearly see that the gain decreases when the altitude increases. I only don't understand this one. If the antenna altitude is 50 meters, the gain increases to 8.86 dBi. I do not understand why this is. If someone knows the answer, please leave a comment below. In free space, the maximum gain is 5.56 dBi. Here is the vertical and horizontal radiation pattern when collinear antenna 2 is in free space. Again, the vertical radiation pattern in free space and the corresponding radiation pattern in 3D. And here again, the radiation pattern in 3D. As you can see, the maximum gain is in this area. Again, two performance tests are conducted for collinear antenna 2. Performance test A. The collinear antenna 2 is attached to an end node, which is located inside a building and transmits messages which will be received by nearby gateways in my area. The average RSSI is calculated and also the total time it took to receive 15 messages. The test will be repeated using a sleeve dipole antenna. Performance test B. 
The collinear antenna 2 is attached to an end node and transmits messages which will be received by a dedicated gateway 6 meters away. Both devices are indoors. The average RSSI is calculated and also the total time it took to receive 15 messages. The test will be repeated using a half-wave dipole antenna. The collinear antenna 2 performance is compared with the sleeve dipole antenna. More information about sleeve dipole antennas, see tutorial 43. For this test I'm using the end node and antenna C as demonstrated in tutorial 33. More information about this end node, see this tutorial. The end node uses the MCCI LoRaWAN ELMIC library. See this GitHub page. The end node uses the following sketch. See this link. In this setup, the end node is directly attached to collinear antenna 2. Here you see the sleeve dipole antenna attached to the end node. I have not modified the end node transmission power when using collinear antenna 2. In my area, there are several gateways, and I know that these gateways, which are connected to the Things network, can receive my transmitted data. Collinear antenna 2 is attached to the end node at location A and transmits data. I have done the same with the sleeve dipole antenna. In both cases, two messages per minute were transmitted. The log data can be found at this location. The end node transmission power is 14 dBm. This table is created with the help of this log data. These are the gateways which were able to receive my transmitted sensor data. These are the distances between the end node and the gateway. And these are the gateway antenna altitudes. These are the average RSSI values for the collinear antenna 2. And these are the average RSSI values for the sleeve dipole antenna. These asterisks means that there were only one or few measurements, and I will ignore these results. According to the table, there is no significant difference in the average RSSI values between the collinear antenna 2 and sleeve dipole antenna. However, more gateways were able to receive the transmitted data from collinear antenna 2 compared to the sleeve dipole antenna. As you can clearly see, more gateways were able to receive the transmitted sensor data compared to the sleeve dipole antenna. If I look at this gateway, the distance is 11.3 kilometers. That is this gateway. My end node is here. And the gateway is located here. As you can see, the gateway is located in the center of Amsterdam, which has a lot of buildings. The time it took for the gateways to receive the 15 messages from the end node using the sleeve dipole antenna is 8.5 minutes, and using collinear antenna 2 is 8.5 minutes. The Arduino sketch is configured to transmit 2 messages per minute. In a perfect situation, it should take 7.5 to 8 minutes to receive these 15 messages. Performance test B. Make sure you keep everything in your setup the same when switching from collinear antenna 2 to the half-wave dipole antenna. A slight change can impact your measurements. Do not change the height of the end node and the height of the gateway. Do not change the distance between end node and the gateway. Use the same end node and gateway. Use the same connectors. During the measurements, I did not stay in the same room. The distance between transmitter and receiver should be greater than 4 wavelengths, meaning you are in the far field region. More information about near and far field, see tutorial 34. Here is the end node with collinear antenna 2 attached, and here is the gateway using antenna C. Antenna C is explained in tutorial 33. The distance between the two antennas is 6 meters. In this picture, you see collinear antenna 2 in the foreground, and in the background, the gateway, and in the reverse, in the foreground, you see the gateway, and in the background, you see collinear antenna 2. 
exactly the same setup but using a half wave dipole antenna. Here is the half wave dipole antenna in the foreground and in the background the gateway and in reverse the gateway is in the foreground and in the background the half wave dipole antenna. This half wave dipole antenna is used in this setup. The half wave dipole antenna is discussed in tutorial 41. As you can see, the end node is directly attached to the half wave dipole antenna. This particular half wave dipole antenna has a fizz war approximately 1.1, an impedance of approximately 54 ohms, and S11 approximately minus 27 dB. The log data can be found at this location. The average RSSI when using the half wave dipole antenna is minus 33.8 dBm, and the average RSSI when using collinear antenna 2 is minus 37.5 dBm. The time it took for the gateway to receive the 15 messages from the end node using the half wave dipole antenna is 8.5 minutes, and using the collinear antenna 2 is 9 minutes. The Arduino sketch is configured to transmit two messages per minute. In a perfect situation, it should take 7.5 to 8 minutes to transmit these 15 messages. Based on the results of performance tests A and B, I conclude that collinear antenna 2 performance is much better compared to the half wave dipole antenna. Why is this? Because more gateways in my area were able to receive the transmitted sensor data. This is also collaborated looking at the 4 NEC2 radiation pattern in the vertical plane and the fact that all my nearby gateways operate at an elevation angle between minus degree and 3 degrees. Now let's compare collinear antenna 1 with collinear antenna 2. Collinear antenna 2 has a better antenna performance compared to collinear antenna 1. More gateways were able to receive the transmitted sensor data using collinear antenna 2 compared to collinear antenna 1. Collinear antenna 2 has a higher gain at elevation angles between minus degree and 3 degrees compared to collinear antenna 1, according to the 4 NEC2 radiation patterns in the vertical plane. And here are some remarks. The 4 NEC2 program simulates how the antenna behaves but my collinear antennas are not accurately modeled, which means that the generated radiation patterns and other antenna parameters are just a rough indication of how the real collinear antennas behave. If you want accurate radiation patterns and other antenna parameters, these antenna measurements should be performed in an anechoic chamber. Normally, a collinear antenna is attached to a gateway and not to an end device. Let's assume you bought a collinear antenna which has a maximum gain of 6 dBi. This is the same as 3.85 dBd. Use this equation to convert 6 dBi to dBd. In the Gateway Global Configuration JSON file, see tutorial 30, you must specify the antenna gain. If a collinear antenna is put inside a plastic or glass fiber tube, Always measure the antenna parameters with an antenna analyzer when the antenna is inside the tube. It is possible to put the collinear antenna inside the PVC tube, but use a thin tube wall. Gray PVC tubes may contain carbon. Carbon absorbs or reflects RF signals. To check if the PVC tube contains carbon, you can apply the microwave method. The microwave method is explained at this webpage. Warning. If you apply the microwave method, it may destroy your microwave. Do this at your own risk. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.